At this moment in time, the political landscape in Afghanistan is a particularly fractious one. What we're likely to see is an extended period of instability that will really be triggered by the election. So in, in a way, elections will actually contribute to further destabilization. There's unlikely to be a consensus uh, between the various parties as to who should govern Afghanistan over the next five years. That lack of consensus is likely to play itself out in many of the powerful former Northern Alliance figures or former warlords deciding to be more assertive and opposing the central government increasingly, which will again reduce the central government's writ and ability to enforce its uh, decisions. Uh, and at the same time, you have the impact of the Taliban who have uh, disavowed the entire process of elections. So we see Afghanistan heading towards a three-way fight in many ways. The issue of the stability of uh, the government in Kabul is going to be an increasingly worrisome one over the next five years. What we will see is an increasing pressure on the government, both in terms of its fiscal responsibility or fiscal stability, and in terms of its ability to provide security to its citizens. The, the central government is heavily dependent on foreign aid, and now that the uh, US-led international mission in Afghanistan will come to an end in December 2014, the long-term sustainability of that aid is under question. Even though all the uh, member nations have committed to continue aiding Afghanistan over the next five to ten years, nonetheless, with the conflict winding down and Afghanistan very much on the back burner as far as the West is concerned, there are questions about how long these countries are willing to keep paying Afghanistan, especially when the results of any uh, quantifiable change will be difficult to see. The other issue, of course, will be how uh, the government secures its own citizens and provides physical security. Now, the Taliban have in again and again proven that they can break into uh, highly secured uh, areas. They've uh, conducted attacks in Kabul's high security zone. Uh, they have increased attacks wherever Afghan national security forces have taken over security responsibility from Western forces. And so it leaves the government vulnerable to the claim that they will not be able to control large tracts of area within the country, uh, especially after 2014. ISAF's withdrawal from Afghanistan will have a significant impact on all of Afghanistan's neighbors, and that includes Pakistan, the Central Asian states of Kazakhstan, Tajikistan and Uzbekistan, Iran, and even India, which is not a direct neighbor of Afghanistan, but will nonetheless be impacted by the withdrawal of international forces. The most significant impact will be felt in Pakistan, because large numbers of jihadist recruits from Pakistani madrasas will be freed up after international forces leave and will then increasingly look to target assets within Pakistan. Now, the withdrawal of Western forces will no doubt be perceived and will be spun as a victory for uh, the jihadists and to match the, the earlier victory against Soviet forces in the 80s and 90s. And this will further embolden uh, these jihadist groups, and especially jihadist groups based in Pakistan, to increase their attacks against the Pakistani state and security forces. In India, as I said, even though India is not a direct neighbor of Afghanistan, there is likely to be a significant impact because what we've seen from jihadi social media monitoring is that there is an increasing aspiration on the part of jihadi groups to bring the conflict into India. And so as numbers of these battle-hardened recruits is freed up from Afghanistan, they are more likely to cross into India. And so we see the possibility of a Mumbai-style major attack on an Indian city increasing in, 20, in 2015. In the, if we look at the Central Asian states, the principal concern for the Central Asian states is to minimize any sort of blowback that may be caused from the return of the citizens of these countries who have been fighting uh, on the side of the Taliban in Afghanistan, because these, the governments in these countries believe that the return of these citizens will lead to significant destabilization within those countries. And these countries are likely to act through proxies in Afghanistan uh, to ensure that a minimal number of these militants return to their homelands. 
Lastly, Iran, which also shares a large border with Afghanistan, will also be worried about any possible blowback from jihadists and from the destabilization which is likely to grow within Afghanistan. Plus, in addition, Iran is also concerned about protecting and championing the cause of Afghanistan's Shia minorities. Thank you.